Good morning everybody, today we are taking a look at the game between Team Secret and Virtus Pro for the XMG Captain Straff Tournament that you guys unanimously agreed I should buy the ticket for. I asked you last video what tournament I'm supposed to buy the ticket for and I had like 50 responses that were XMG and then I had like 2 responses that weren't that. So, sorry to those two guys but... XMG it is. Anyway, uh, the XMG Captain's Draft Tournament, of course, is a very unique tournament because unlike all other tournaments, it is not played in Captain's mode, but instead in Captain's Draft, which quite honestly is uh, far more fun. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Uh, Team Secret right here, we got Kuroki and a sniper, Big Daddy No-Tail, or No-Tail, as I will proceed to call him forever and ever. On the Wave King, we've got Puppy on Ancient Apparition and uh, Brewmaster. Seek, uh, played by S4. And of course, there should be another hero. Yeah, Simba, Fly, or Bot. However the hell you want to call him. On the Nux Assassin. So, that's a pretty okay team. They got a pretty strong carry. Uh, with the Sniper, of course. And then, I like the supporting lineup around it. Uh, Wraith King is going to give him a nice, nice supporting aura, of course. And then, Boomas is always a fantastic hero to have. I think they got a pretty strong lineup right here. Oh... Anything gonna happen? No. But not only do I think they've got a pretty strong lineup, but I also like that they uh, got a decent amount of, you know, counter picking going on, if you could call it that. And Nuke's Assassin is great against Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit is a hero that heavily relies on mana, and just being able to burn through that is gonna be super handy, of course. But while we're talking about that, let's actually take a look at the VP lineup. We've got Storm Spirit played by G, and we've got Venomancer supporting Chatham. Yotam, Yotam up at the top lane, and uh, actually he's not supporting, is he? No, he's solo laning, off laning. Well, not really off laning, safe laning, solo safe laning. Interesting. Hmm. Usually Venomancer's played as more of a support, I think, but hey, this is fine. Venomancer as a core isn't actually that bad, you know, you get that early Aghanims going. It's, it's really cool, but he's not the greatest solo since he does not have any sort of escape mechanism. Only thing he can do is slow people and hope that that's good enough. And then we, of course, also got the Doom sitting in the jungle. Generally speaking, I'm not a huge fan of Doom in the jungle, but this guy right here, Sedoi, actually got very lucky. Managed to grab himself an early, early Centaur, giving him the Unholy Aura. Those 4 HP region are incredibly useful, and he's gonna do fine just because of that. So, he did get lucky right there, but it's nothing to complain about, and it's nothing too significant. And actually, it appears he might just leave it at that, and it's now gonna... Try to help out the top line a little bit. It's not actually a trial lane situation. It's just Kuroki on the sniper and No Tail on the Wave King going up against the solo Venom Man separate here. So if he wants to come into this lane and help out a bit, farm a little, uh, that's actually a pretty, you know, th that's something you can definitely do. And it seems like they might even collapse on the Wave King right here. Uh, they do have the slow and the Scorched Earth is coming out. I wonder if that's going to be enough though, yeah? Uh, Stun connects. Doom is still chasing. And. <laughs> <laughs> the Centaur ability, the Shockwave, actually manages to pull through on that one. Yeah, man, that was the best creep he could have gotten. That was really, really lucky, and it worked out perfectly. Managed to get... He, he now got the Aura, which is gonna help him with laning as well. And they managed to snatch a first blood. Now, of course, we also got another lane, being that Slark Phoenix collaboration at the bottom. Slark played by 633, and Phoenix played by Yol, uh, which is an interesting hero. And we had Phoenix in the last game. I really, really <laughs> don't know what to think about this guy. I have no idea. And we're going to see how he plays out this game, right? This is definitely going to be a showing of whether or not Phoenix is any good in the competitive scene. So, yeah, quite interested in quite interested in seeing how, how this one plays out. He's currently roaming around the mid. Maybe hoping to catch a Simba... Simba, that's a silly name. God, like if you want to call yourself Simba, just go with Simba. Don't go with Simba. You look like you're 12. Like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, freaking well. Look, I would be the best name coach. They should, they should just hire me to, you know, decide whether or not the pro players are allowed to call themselves that name. And honestly, my only criteria is do you look like an idiot with that name? Yes, no. In this case, yes, you do. D don't go with that name. That should actually be your only criteria, right? Think about it. Do I look like an idiot with that name? Oh, nice. He managed to grab himself that career. You know what? I'm actually interested in seeing how this one played out. Um, oh, he just ran in and hit it. Okay. <laughs> Nothing too exciting about that. 
Yeah, I guess that's cute. I wonder if that's what he was going for all along, because this is about the timing where the bottle would be coming in on the next assassin. So, I don't know, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, currently the Slark is not doing well. I think that's actually... Uh, wait, now they tried anything... Look at this, they just they just gave up on the top. They just uh, said, oh, fuck the sniper, he's not gonna get shit. And they're now trialing the Brewmaster instead, which is interesting. Now, uh, think about sniper. This is a carry that got the option of just saying, you know what, I don't have a lot. Let's just get some cheap items that do a lot of damage. Because he does have that incredible, wait, that incredible headshot ability, which it adds a lot of damage to his to his uh, attacks. Really is very powerful in that regard. And oh, Radiance here we've got a pick up on the Phoenix. Hits. Nothing too interesting about that. Probably, you know, just age apparition messing it up. Um, but anyway, Radiance so. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you're done. There's no way he's getting away from that one. Uh, TPs are coming in. Wraith King doesn't have anything, though. He just uses his mana to grab the, the kill on that Phoenix. And S4, also charging in, doesn't have the clap, though. Like, these guys got nothing. I think this might still be enough just because, you know, boots and uh, there we go. A second crit coming out. Doom, however, will be fine. He's just gonna walk a little bit of an elaborate path past the tier 2 tower into the enemy's jungle. And he's actually gonna find himself going up against Radiant Simba on the Nyx right here. Taking, mm, taking a bit of damage, but uh, Boom, Doom is pretty beefy, right? This is a hero that got a lot of lot of strength and he went and bought himself a ring of Basilius. Basilius. So he does have a decent amount of armor on top of the shield. So I don't think Simba's actually gonna be able to grab it. And indeed, he manages to get away. I mean, I mentioned the permission. God, like there's shit happening everywhere. <laughs> Nuke's assassin getting targeted by the Storm Spirit and the Venomizer. The slowest are coming out. I wonder if it's gonna be enough. It seems like it. They just need a few more hits. And yes, indeed, that last Overlord proc is gonna be able to clean out that kill. Meantime, Phoenix TP's out. From something. I have no idea. You know what? Replay magic. Let's take a look. Let's take a look what actually happened. So while the mid was getting murdered, Ancient Apparition is getting dove in by the Slark and the Phoenix. Just a quick and easy pickup, nothing too interesting about that one, but now we got No Tail and Brewmaster coming in. Ah, and it just seems like Phoenix is gonna TP out of this one. They got nothing to stop him and they know it. It's pretty obvious, right? Like, the only stun they've got is No Tail with his Ray Fire Blast. And he doesn't, oh well, he didn't have enough mana for it. So, not really working out that great for him. I kind of wish uh, he, he bought himself something that, that gave him a bit of mana. You know, he could maybe grab an Urn of Shadows or a Medallion or maybe just get another Ring of Basilos, Mana Boots. You know, he needs to get something that helps him with his whole ganking shenanigans just a tiny little bit. And at level 3, I don't know what he's doing with only having one point into the Wraith Fire Blast. That's a little weird. He still stats one, so I think that's pretty obvious right here. But I don't know why he's not skilling the, uh, the Q again. Hmm. I wonder if he just is waiting, maybe he's gonna decide to go jungling and then he wants to have a point into the Vampiric Aura or something, but it's a little odd. Meantime, Brewmaster getting initiated upon and will actually get picked off rather quickly. Not much of a fight. Mm, more of like a murder. <laughs> Didn't stand much of a chance right there. And it seems that right now, actually, you know, VP is doing pretty well for themselves. The experience lead is insignificant, but already 2k gold lead 6 minutes into the game. That's pretty solid, right? That's not incredible, but it's pretty good. Kurogi, just gonna try to deal as much damage as he can before he dies. And he's actually gonna be enough to grab himself a kill. He might even not die! No, no he will. Doom, however, goes down too. And now Simba coming in, going for that Phoenix. He does have a stun, does he have the W? There we go, Mana Burn comes out, takes down the bird. And that's gonna be that, so that actually worked out great for them. But, ah, oh, man. Meantime, Slark kills the... Kills the Wraith King at the bottom lane. Mm. Poor old Note. Not really much he could do about that one, I suppose. Well, yeah, that's... That's kind of shitty, you know? But, hey. Slark is a hero that they need to be worried about. Because Slark is really fucking powerful. <laughs> and... While they do have an Ancient Apparition, which is a pretty good hero if you're going up against Slark because he can't just take away his uh, Shadow Dance, right? They do have that Ancient Apparition. 
I still think Slark is just going to be horribly annoying because that hero is actually great at closing distances, right? If he gets his blink, he can always, always get the jump on Kuroki on that sniper. He's already not doing well. And Sniper is a hero that needs to stay in the bag, right? He ca he can, of course, fight if if even even if you're close nearby, right? But he doesn't want to do that. He just wants to sit all the way in the back and snipe some people. He's called the sniper for a reason. <laughs> and I don't know if he's going to be able to do that against the Slark. And against the Storm Spirit for that matter. And against the Phoenix. Uh, this might actually be the reason why they sent him into that solo offlane. Because he's not going to get a whole lot no matter what. Oh, actually, Slark finds himself a Wraith King. He's going to commit to this. Already got all of his abilities used, except for the ultimate. And here we go with the ultimate. And actually, oh, oh, this is going to be interesting. He's dropping. He's definitely dropping. The Frostbitten might be enough. No, no. Yes! It was. Holy shit, that was very close. Very, very close. But hey, in the end, it worked out. I think he actually made a mistake by toggling his boots. Wait, I want to take another look at that. Allow me to skip back again. Oh, that was not back enough. Yeah, he's jumping. Uh, yeah, look at that. He toggled his boots. No. He misplayed that horribly. So, uh, you know, he, he, he toggled his boots. And for those few seconds where his HP was lower because he had them on intelligence and on, on agility, he actually took more damage, percentage-based, from the ultimate from Ancient Apparition. That might have actually been enough to kill him, right? He might have been fine. I'm not sure. Might have died anyway. But there's a possibility that that actually was the deciding deciding factor. And if it was, that's that's kind of sad. And I know what he went for. Right? It's pretty obvious. He, he toggled and then activated the magic stick to get the maximum heal out of that. But that doesn't actually work against Ancient Apparition. And I think, as a professional player, you should be aware of that. And that's going on to Nyx Assassin right here. Doesn't have an ultimate, but in a few second he seconds he will. There we go. And he will commit to this kill. I'm mm, going to try to get away. He does have a jump, so he should be fine. There's actually not much of a worry. They could catch him at this point. So hey, he's doing pretty well for himself. I wonder what, he, what he's going for. Now, he already got the, the Orb of Venom, so that's eventually gonna end up becoming a Scarly, right? Like, I suppose it could be just a casual Orb of Venom, which isn't bad either, but it's probably gonna be a Scarly, because Scarly is just great on Slark. Like, okay, so Slark is a hero that really likes it if the, the fights last a long time, right? He does. I mean, like, if there's a fight that... If he had the choice between being in a fight for a minute and being able to constantly hit people... Or having a fight that's over in 10 seconds, he would always take the one minute fight because he's more likely to win that one. Right? Makes a lot of sense since the longer the fights, the more asset shift he is going to steal. The more often he's going to jump in and out of it with the ultimate. Uh, well, not with the ultimate, he can only use that one even in a, once in a, even in a minute fight, but like the passive region, right? You, you hide in the shadows really quick, a region like 100 or 200 HP rather instantly if you got it at level 3. So, you know. He really benefits from that. And Scardy is the kind of item that actually allows for, for that scenario. Since you get to slow people down, so you're not really bursting them, but you're just slowly whittling them to the death, uh, to, to death, right? You're just hitting them a lot. And it also makes it really tanky while not adding too crazy damage. So, you know, the Essence Shift is, is mostly what you go for with Slark because it's a very powerful ability. And... Yeah, you know, Scotty. He's, he's a great tool on this hero. So I wonder if he's going to go for this one. Oh my god, Kuroki totally ran back into it. He tried to predict. He tried to predict where he was going to jump. And didn't happen, mate. That's not good enough. Ah, I feel a little bad for you right there. It was a nice attempt, but it wasn't good enough, man. It wasn't good enough. Poor little fellow. Poor little fellow. Okay, then. Okay. So I think it's pretty obvious that he's going for for a blink. He could also just be rushing a Scarly, but I think that's unlikely. Rushed Scarly doesn't do that much, right? You usually want to get either a blink or a BKB. One of those two, not just straight Scarly. Meantime, Venomatsa gets picked off by the Nukes Assassin. Nothing too interesting about it. But here we go with a bit of an engagement between Storm and the Nukes. Uh, he does have the shield active, but I wonder if that's actually going to be enough. Oh! <laughs> dodges him. But then again, he dodges the follow-up stun. And, oh, 
Man just to snatch a kill on the Nyx Assassin. So, sadly, the fight recap doesn't include the Venomancer right here. But that was definitely an advantage coming out for VP. And I think VP are really, really doing good right here. Yeah, man, they are pulling ahead. Um, experience still a little, you know, like 2,000, 2,500 at 12 minutes into the game. That's just something that, that can swing for like one or two kills. It's not really that important. Right? That's just, uh, you know. Mm. But 5k gold, like at 5k, 7k. Now we're getting to a number where, oh, okay. So there's actually a clear cut advantage. You're going to notice that this team has more and better items. And yeah. So, ah, he's definitely going for blink. Definitely going for blink. So that's going to be coming up in a bit. So now also stacking and taking down these ancients, which is uh, pretty cute. I really like that. And there we go. Got enough money now. Meantime, we got a push in the mid. Stun coming out on the Phoenix. Tower goes down. Not denied. Chotum tried to go for it, but it just wasn't good enough. But, you know, he's Venom, so he's mostly about the magic damage, not so much about the attacks. Brewmaster jumping in, splits. That's not really doing so much so far. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Hits two heroes with that ultimate. Ancient apparition, frostbiting. Quite a bit of damage coming out from that. Meantime, Storm Spirit jumps in, gets locked down by Note. Note still got the ultimate, so they don't actually want to kill him, but it doesn't seem like they even need to. Nyx goes down. Sniper and Ancient apparition are already dead. Note going to try to get away now. It's actually a horrible fight for, for the Radiant right here. That didn't go well at all. Well, that's a bit of a shame. That's definitely a bit of a shame. Um, yeah. I kind of thought they were going to do a little better right there. It was a nice ultimate. Uh, you know, at this close of a distance, if you can hit two people with that ancient apparition ultimate, that's pretty good. You know, it's... Yeah, it's got a big AoE if you cast it from far away, but if, you, if you're really nearby, it's just, it's just not, that, not that simple. Actually, I just noticed he got himself a Hand of Midas. That is really cute, puppy. I like that. So the thing about this Hand of Midas pickup, why do supports sometimes get Hand of Midas? If a support is doing well, honestly, they should basically always get a Hand of Midas. As long as you're, of course, making sure that you're also getting awards and all those shenanigans. But the thing about the Hand of Midas, it's not really that expensive, right? You can get it in 15 minutes if you are warding and you're not doing horribly, right? Like, he's 4-2 on kills. That's pretty good. So, generally speaking, you should be able to grab it yeah, at a reasonable time. And once you have it, the cool thing about the Hand of Midas is that it's the only farming item in the game that actually converts creeps into reliable gold. So usually reliable gold is gold that you only get through kills, right? If you kill something, you get reliable gold from that kill. If you kill a creep, that's unreliable gold. What's the difference between reliable and unreliable gold? No, honestly, it's, it's in the name, right? Like, you cannot lose reliable gold. If you die and you have 100% reliable gold, you will not lose any money from that death. If, however, uh, you have, let's say... Look, let's say you lose 500 gold on death. Uh, that's a lot, but just for the sake of, argue, of the argument, right? You got 1,000 gold. Got 1,000 gold, 500 gold is what you lose on death. If now, let's say you had 100% um, of that in reliable, you would lose zero, right? All of it is just reliable. You're not losing any of it. It's fine. You don't have to worry. However, let's say 100% of it is unreliable. Then you were to lose 500 which is what you're supposed to lose. You still have 500 more. But if you die again, then you lose those as well. And then you're back down to zero. Now, let's just say 75% of that is reliable. Then all you lose is those 250 gold that are not reliable. The unreliable gold portion of it. But you cannot lose reliable gold. Now, Hand of Midas gives support permanent income, right? Continuous income that is reliable. So as you can see right here, he's got 492 reliable gold. He's going to try to not spend any money that is not uh, that is uh, that is not reliable. Wait, that, that doesn't make any sense? He's going to avoid spending his reliable gold. If you buy an item, like the Town Portal score right here, your unreliable gold gets spent first. Okay? I think that's different for buyback. I think if you buy back, then your reliable gold gets spent first. I'm not sure about that, but... <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. That was definitely beautiful. But you're going to see that he will most likely just keep his reliable gold at high as at as high as possible. And as a result, 
he will be able to pick up a lot of items that he usually wouldn't be able to. Because while supports die a lot, it doesn't matter if you don't lose money on death, right? It just doesn't really hold that much of a re relevance. And that poor courier just... Just God, I feel so bad for him. <laughs> but that's why you see that Hand of Midas, and it's actually a really cool item if you can afford it. It's actually not just a, oh, man, I'm, I'm so salty that I'm playing support. No, it's actually a genuinely great item for support heroes, if you can afford it. If you can't, then you should honestly skip it, right? And and it's not even good on every hero, but I think on Ancient Apparition it's fine, because this is actually a guy where you want to get Aghanims as early as you can. So as you can see right now, right, he's got 1,900 gold saved up, but he's not actually buying anything, because in his mind, how much gold he actually has is 700. He has 700 gold, and that's it. Doesn't have any more than that. Uh, he's probably going to spend something, some of it anyway, because running around with this much money still doesn't make a lot of sense. But just, just to get into the mindset, right? Just to get into the ideas that uh, are related to the Hand of Midas on a hero like Ancient Apparition, uh, which I think is actually really, really nice. So, it's just going to grab some wards. Doesn't seem like he's actually going to buy anything else. Ah, there we go. Managed just to grab himself a staff of wizardry. But you see... Like, he actually spent, like, 700 unreliable and 300 reliable gold. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. And he's still 800 gold that he cannot lose. Oh, Brewmaster jumps in, gets doomed, and now the Phoenix ultimate. And I don't think they can actually grab this one. No, he got hit by a Firebird first, so he's going to do just fine. For Icarus Star on to Big Daddy Note right here. He does have an ultimate, however, and Phoenix will die? I don't know. That's a pretty slow attack animation, but it's still enough to take him down. Ancient Apparition manages to, manages to grab that one. And Puppy's doing really well for himself right now. He's just doing great, honestly. <laughs> so, of course, he's looking to build that big Aghanim Scepter. I don't know if he's trying to maybe get like a Force Staff or something first. But Aghanim Scepter is what we need to expect. Because it's, it's just incredible, right? It's just a very powerful item. Oh, and in the meantime, a piece? We actually missed the kill. Ah, Nux. Nix, 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 nix. It's difficult to keep up with that fellow. You know, he just randomly appears out of nowhere, kills somebody, and then vanishes again. Yeah, but, you know, it's just it's something minor. It's it's a kill on the Venom, man, so it's okay, right? Like, yeah, this is definitely a kill you can t like you take if you can, but mm, it's nothing too big. So it seems Slark is actually going exactly from what I mentioned earlier. A Big B is not too great this game, actually, because, you know, the only one where you are really using it against is uh, the, yeah, yeah, what is his face, the Nyx Assassin, and it's not that big of a deal to deal with a Nyx Assassin. Meantime, uh, Brewmaster actually splitting only for the uh, Storm Spirit right here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Blink Pro and Kuroki, gonna be able to pick up that kill. And Phoenix, I don't know, Note wants to get this one. They don't actually have the ability to do so, and it seems that Poppy grabbed himself a full staff. But as you can see, he's still keeping his reliable gold. Like, as high as he can, so... Uh, while, of course, he's not going to... Like, he could maximize it, but then it would just slow him down so much. But he's still trying to make that happen, right? So just keep that in mind. Like, if you see professional players play, it's one of those minor things that makes them have more money, right? Like, take, it the net, take a look at the net worth. He's got 6k net worth. That's a lot for his support. Uh, that's a ton, but he also got 7 kills, so I guess that explains it. <laughs> anyway... But yeah, uh, BKB isn't too great this game. It also doesn't block the Ancient Apparition's ultimate, which if it did that, I think it would be amazing. But if it, since it doesn't, it's just, oh, I don't know. But hey, uh, I think Scarly is just fine. Just fine. And of course the Blink. Roaming around the map with that, trying to get some pick on on some foolish heroes then. Trying to make some shenanigans happen, you know. He is just a fishy, 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 fishy. I guess actually a shark or something. Aren't shark fish? Are shark fish? I don't actually know. Shark or are shark fish? I think sharks are fish, right? They are fish. Like dolphins aren't fish, and whales aren't fish. Are sharks fish? I think sharks are fish. <laughs> oh no! I have no idea. Look, don't judge me. Don't judge me. If a dolphin isn't a fish, then I don't see why a, uh, why a shark could also not not be a fish. Just saying, I'm just saying, I don't think they are a fish. I don't think so, then. Oh, man, I'm making myself look like a fool again, aren't I? God, it's a difficult question, man. It's a difficult question, man. Meantime, let me actually show this one off to you. I want to show this one. So, this is why you why Blink on Slark is that, right? You see that? 
Let's take another look. There's Kuroki. Slark. It's gonna get the Q going. Jumps in. Instant kill. Like, there is so much damage coming out. It's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> so, you know, it's... Why does it say Tango? Oh, because there's a Tango on the ground. Uh, uh. Okay, well, that confused me. But that's why Blink on Slark is so very good. Like, it's, it's really, really, really great. I very much like that item. Anyway, Blink on Brewmaster. He also grabbed himself a Vladimir's, of course, giving his team that aura is going to be fantastic. They don't really have a melee right-click carry, but nonetheless, it's still good to have. Actually going to be diving in on the Venomancer. Split. Not used for much else right now. Oh, actually in the background, Slark manages to grab a kill onto the Ancient Apparition. And he's getting locked down at the moment. I think he will die. Yeah, Slark goes down. Storm Spirit going to TP out of this one. Not a great trade, but at least they managed to secure the tower, so it's okay, right? Like, again, god, this, this... I'm just, I'm just not gonna quit. Look at this shit! This is pointless. No! It doesn't include any of this. God, why does it not include the Venomancer and the Angel of Permission and the tower? Why is it only the Slark? Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow! Secret is actually... Secret is actually ahead on experience now. That's interesting. Yeah, they're definitely coming back into this. I mean, their gold is still struggling a bit, but now that we're 23 minutes into it, not even a 5k difference, or slightly above a 5k difference, not a big deal, man. That's fine. That is fine. You can definitely deal with that. The experience is very nice, however, that they actually managed to secure just a tiny bit of a lead. But again, this might as well be even. Might as well be even. Just doesn't make much of a difference. Anyway, so Sniper grabbed himself a Blink Dagger. This is an item I personally am not the biggest fan of. Like, I get why people, people buy it, because as I explained earlier, Sniper, all about positioning, right? You want to be in the back, you want to hit some people. And uh, Blink helps with that, allows you to be in the back and, you know, get that good positioning. But, uh, you know, just, just get, like, BKB and hit people. I don't know. <laughs> I get why people buy the Blink. I do, I do, but it's, I just don't like it that much, I really don't, maybe just because I, while playing with it, haven't had great experiences, Doom on Simba, not much you can do about this one, Frostbite also used Poppy, gonna try to get away from it, oh, split, Phoenix, gonna get sniped, does he have an ultimate, doesn't use it in time, oh, that's, that's a real shame, Slark jumping onto, onto Poppy right here, He's gonna be chased away, however. He doesn't have much. He doesn't have much at all. Nice crit. But... Oh! <laughs> Kuroki showing off his Blink Dagger. This is why you buy it, apparently. And now Doom will get picked off. There's not much he can do. Yeah, you can really see the power of the Brew coming out right now. Like, just the split and then... The, the problem with Brew is... Even if he splits, right? Like, what do you do? What is your reaction? Do you try to kill the Broodlings? Brulings, I'm sorry, that's what they're called. <laughs> Do you try to kill the pandas? No. No, you can't. Like, that's not going to happen. I guess you could kill the fire panda, but the storm panda is going to run away if you try to go for it. And the earth panda is super fucking tanky, right? You're not killing those fuckers. So what other choice do you really have? You can only let him do what he wants to do, and in that situation, you're just going to lose the fight because fuck, Bru is powerful. It is a very difficult situation to be in. Very, very difficult to deal with. And that's actually why Doom is going to be great this game, because Doom is one of the few heroes that can deal with Brewmaster. Because he's just going to blink in and fucking Doom him. <laughs> right? And Brew is not the kind of hero that's going to go for Lincolns. So Doom can just jump in with his blink dagger, secure the Doom, lock him down, get the kill. Problem is, he doesn't seem to be going for an Agonims, which uh, I don't like. I think he needs an Aghanims this game, I really do. I wish he was going for the Aghanims refresher build. He might still do that, right? Like, this plate may might just be a Shiva's guard, or just a casual plate may. You know, that's also possible. But I do think, I do think he needs to get an Aghanims, because just Doom against Brewmaster is usually not enough. Brew is pretty tanky. I guess if you fuck your down after you cast it, maybe. But... Trouble brewing He's not gonna die from it, so he can't just wait it out and then 
It doesn't really matter how much damage you deal to a brewer as long as he still got a split, right? Like, as long as he gets it off, he's gonna be fine. Yeah, no, it's a b it's a tricky situation to be in, that's for sure. And I think actually Slark got a Scotty right here. I think he got it. Let's take a look at the career. Oh man, did he sell his Orb of Venom? I think he sold his Orb of Venom. Can't do nothing about dire structures right oh, that is that is so unfortunate. No, well, he's gonna have to buy a new one. That's actually the only thing he's missing for his Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> the poor little fellow, I actually feel bad for him now. Well, he's just gonna go in and take down a few of these. Oh, well, Venom is a very cheap item, so it shouldn't take long for him to grab the money he needs. And there you go. Oh, <laughs> Oh, the poor little slug. I mean, I like what he's going for, but, you know, it's just, God. It's so frustrating when everything goes wrong, isn't it? Oh, Nux jumping in on the Doom, gets the instant stand with the... With the carapace, and uh, well, the split comes out. They're gonna take down the Nyx, but Doom taking a bunch of damage from this Brewmaster right here. Can still blink away. BKB, of course, didn't get hit. Well, that's that's actually pretty good for the Dire right here. I mean, Doom is still alive, barely, but it's good enough to get up with Doom and then get out. That's all he needs to do, honestly. And trading the Nyx Assassin for the Venomance, I think, is fine. I mean, Venomance is the lowest net worth in the game. Oh, Doom coming out on somebody. Oh, it's Big Daddy No Tail. No Tail! No! Poor little guy. Not much he can do about that one. Uh, I wonder if the Doom was even necessary for that, honestly. And what is he gonna do? He's gonna stun you, I guess, but... You know... It's not the scariest thing in the world. I don't know. I, don't know. Well, I guess Doom doesn't have the longest cooldown. A hundred seconds. But still. Maybe a bit unnecessary right there. Oh well. You know what? That's fine. What about Slark going for next? It could really be a lot. Like, could go for some attack speed with like a butterfly. Could just go for a lot of damage with the Bash, and of course the Lockdown co lockdown coming out from that is pretty fantastic. But in the meantime, it appears actually we got a situation with the Nyx Assassin. Nyx goes down. It's gonna be the end of it. Oh, uh, Slark trying to take down the, the Sniper, I believe, yeah. Manages to steal a bunch of agility from him, though, so... I guess that's okay, you know? Like, that could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing himself 33 agility for the next fight if they want to take one, or maybe for Roshan or something. That's a that's an okay situation to be in. I wouldn't be too upset if I was that slug. It's just you know it's a shame I didn't get the kill, but at least I got a bunch of agility to play around with. So let's go and start making some shit happen. And there we go. He's got himself. Actually, wait. Ah, that was from a previous fight, so he didn't actually get that many hits in on the sniper. Yeah, it would have been a little weird, honestly, because... Hmm. Sniper isn't that tanky. What does he have? Oh, wow, he actually is pretty tanky. Two ultimate orbs. I mean, it's still a sniper, so... He's pretty tanky for a sniper, which means he's super fucking squishy, but... Hey, he got himself two ultimate orbs. That's gonna result in a Scotty, I assume? Got a Maelstrom, got a Blink. I think this guy is doing pretty well for himself, actually. I wonder what he's gonna go for after he grabs the Scotty. That's actually very interesting. He could just go balls to the wall crazy and grab himself like a mask of madness or something. I would like to see like to see just a butterfly. <laughs> you know what? The mask of madness, I don't think will be too horrible, but you know what he needs? He needs a BKB. He just does. I I guess right now he's banking on on the fact that, well, I got blink. You know, I'm just gonna try to not get hit by anything and then hit people. But honestly, against as much long-range initiation the enemy team has, it's probably not just not, not going to happen, you know? You've got the Storm Spirit, you've got Doom with a blink, you've got Phoenix with the freaking Icarus Dive, you've got Snark with a blink. They're probably gonna catch you, you know? And then, well, ain't gonna blink away no more. So. Well, let's just see how this plays out. Doom, going for the Sorceress right here, also grabbed himself the Vladimir's. So he's going more of a... I don't know, actually. He's kind of building like a Brewmaster would, honestly. I mean, do you see much of a difference between his item build and the one Brewmaster has? Because I don't. 
It's honestly kind of the same thing right here. Hmm. Except that he's got a BKB. I mean, he's Doom. He's gonna have more money. Welcome to fucking Doom. That's what the hero does. He has a lot of money. So, you know, there's always that. It's kind of slowed down a bit, this game. Hasn't it? It's pretty slow now. And it's weird, because it's not that easy to, to judge who benefits from a slower game. Oh, Wraith King. Gonna get the resurrection right here. Actually, unfortunate that he was on level 16 right there, because 160 second cooldown is much higher than 60 seconds, so... Would have liked to have that. Doom coming in. He's actually invisible, coming in from the back. Probably gonna go for a Doom on the sniper right here. Oh, meantime, Phoenix gets snippety the snip. And, well, actually with two heroes dead, I don't see much of a reason to initiate on this anymore. Why is he dropping his... Oh, <laughs> he... That son of a bitch. Okay, let's take a look at that one. Do you see what he did? He dropped both of his ultimate orbs. And then the mana came out from the Nyx Assassin. And so he gained more mana. Now the problem with that is that there's actually an invisible Doom around. And if this Doom was just a tiny bit more cocky, one of those Orbs of Venoms at least would have been gone. That's actually something worth dying for, honestly. So, not Orbs of Venom, uh, Ultimate Orbs. So, you cocky motherfucker, you got really lucky right there. <laughs> and they're now going to start pressuring this tower. Actually, by pressuring, I mean, it's pretty dead already. Yep, there we go. In meantime, Doom gets picked off. Oh, he's stuck around for too long. Invisibility has been done for a while. Slark jumping in onto Kuroki. Split coming out. Kuroki just TPing. He doesn't seem to be interested in fighting in any of this. Well, okay, so VP will chase down the brew right here. And they're already trying to laser him up, you know, stop him from blinking once the once the split ends, and they actually managed to do so. So secret will lose S4. That's gonna probably be the end of it. And uh, actually, you know, S4 managed to take down that Aegis. That Aegis probably didn't have a lot of time left on it anyway, so I don't think that's a big problem for VP. I think that's definitely an okay trade, but. You know, that's that's a little odd that Kuroki just wasn't interested in fighting that at all. Guess didn't want to deal with that. It was a bit risky, it really was, man. Eh, okay then. You know what? You do what you wanna do. You do what you wanna do. Shiva's guard on the Phoenix right here. So he's gonna be able to do the Icarus dive into the Shiva's guard shenanigans. Which is pretty cute, you know, you're like this diving phoenix of ice, it's it's pretty horrible. <laughs> also, it actually works well with the ultimate, because first of all, it locks people in place. Secondly, the aura stops their attack speed. So it's not as easy to take it down, take down the egg. Uh, you know, it's a pretty, pretty good item to get on a hero. Meantime, jump on Kuroki. Kuroki taking so much damage. And he doesn't have a BKB, but he buys back, buys back immediately. Ready to fight again. Sark taking a bunch of damage. Wave King jumping in. Takes down Phoenix. Phoenix didn't even get to cast. No, he did cast his ultimate. Oh no, it was on cooldown before the fight ended. Oh, that is unfortunate. That was a bit of a hasty engagement then. Yeah, you shouldn't get married that early. You can't marry a man that you just met. God, Kuroki. Wait, what's going on with my mouse? Sorry, my mouse is going crazy. There we go. There we go. So they lose two supports. Uh, get a buyback on Kuroki. I wonder if that's fine? <laughs> I think it might actually be, you know? Because essentially, uh, you just set him back by like... Nah, I don't know. I don't actually know if that is, that is fine. I'm really not sure about it. But I guess any second you slow down Kuroki on that sniper is gonna be a good second. Because sniper's pretty scary late. Let's just be honest about that. Especially if you got a Wraith King support. You know, the 30% dice the aura is really significant. <laughs> that is actually very important. So. You know, I don't know. I'm not too sure about that. Not too sure if that worked out. 
Hmm. Yeah. No. We're gonna see about it. Right? We're gonna see about it. Poor Venomans. I feel so bad for Yotam. <laughs> he still doesn't have anything. Like on the other side, you've got Puppy picking up an ultimate orb, having 2.5k saved up. So I'm guessing it's probably gonna end up being a sheep stick. No Aghanims this game, which I think is very surprising because usually Aghanims is considered to be pretty core in Ancient Apparition. And I would think so. I would think that is especially true if you're going up against Slark, you know? But I guess he doesn't want one, and, you know, how can you argue with that, honestly? It's just, okay, you don't want an Aghanims, then don't get an Aghanims, but I think it's good. The Autumn gonna get taken on before you manages to cast anything. Slark jumping in, getting slowed, uses his ultimate without being able to do much of anything with it. BKB coming out, Kuroki, taking a lot of damage. G. Is he really just called G? Yeah, G picks off Kuroki. That's 90 seconds on his resurrection. Phoenix Egg used and No Tail in the middle of everything. Gonna get picked off. Does not have an ultimate already used that one. Split takes down Do. And Simba trying to get away from the Phoenix. Not enough, but Split still doing a lot. And Poppy and it's currently just Poppy and S4 taking down the entire VP lineup. Slark thrown up into the air. Now the problem is Slark is actually double damage, but they're gonna be able to push it off. Oh no! They missed that, but he's not done yet. Gets hexed up and will actually get taken down as a result to his greed. And now it's just Poppy on an ancient apparition left. And I don't think Poppy's going to be able to get out of that one. Simba waited a long time with the buyback. I wonder if he just didn't have enough gold. No, he definitely had enough gold. Maybe it wasn't cool done. A little odd right there. If he was going to buyback, he should have done so already. S4 also coming back. Jumping back in on the slug. He still got an ultimate. Actually got it back. And uh, gonna be able to take down Simba. Now it's just S4 against G and 6-3-3. Six, six, three, three. I wonder who's gonna come out of uh, ahead of this one. The mischance on the Slark is actually making it really difficult for him to get anything done. Now the mischance is on the Storm Sword, which is probably a better target because, you know, Slark can't just purge it off. Now it's S4 against G right here. 6 three, 3 is already running away. Well, he does have the region and he's gonna come back into it. Takes down S4. No tail going on to the Storm Spirit and this will finally seal it. That took forever. Oh my god, what a fight, man. And I just noticed, look at No Tail's item build. He's actually going for some sort of support carry hybrid. Holy shit, he actually got a lot of items. Sanchez Yasha, Skull Basher, Blink. I didn't even notice that. That is crazy, man. Well, the two barracks go down nonetheless, and that's a lot of buybacks used. I mean, that's that's gonna be a big swing, yeah. You see that? That's a huge gold swing just through that last fight, but... Ah. Uh, you know, that didn't go well for them. That didn't go well for them at all. At the very least, they managed to clean up everybody but the slug, right? So they got four kills, but they had to use so many buybacks, and there were multiple diebacks in there, right? Where a hero bought back and then died immediately. Not not the greatest not the greatest fight, but hey, in the end they managed to clean up, so I suppose that's fine, but you see this is exactly what I'm talking about with Kuroki. Every fight he gets jumped and there is nothing he can do about it. He just dies. He just dies instantly. What use is your blink dagger in that situation? What use is your freaking uh freaking what's it called? I was Scarly. I like those items, right? But I think a BKB is a priority. And if you don't want to get a BKB, at least get a Manta style for the tiny bit of protection, right? Get something that helps you survive, because what use is your damage if you're just going to die? I'm sorry, I, I, I don't like it at all. Puppy picks up his scythe of wise right here. Pretty motherfucker. Been doing pretty well for himself. What about this level? Of, yeah, it's 11,000. If you take a look at this, I think it's actually very interesting how they are like three heavily farmed heroes on the Dire and four kind of farmed heroes on the Radiant, and then like these three other guys that got barely anything. Actually, somehow Simba ended up being one of them. I thought he was mid lane solo, wasn't he? Hmm, interesting. Guess he didn't do too well. Yeah, the, the whole. I am this role thing has rotated a lot in this game, right? A lot of these heroes that just started out as supports are now carries all of the sudden, right, Note? <laughs> and the other way around too, you know? Simba playing that Nuxus, Nuxus Assassin core in the mid lane is now supporting. 
And uh, that might have been the plan from the very beginning. And there we go. Again. X coming out on Sniper. Kuroki will die without being able to do anything at all. Phoenix coming in with the laser. The egg. The Shiba's guard. And he's going to be able to pop this one. No tail. Getting taken down by the slug. The brew, brew split is not doing a whole lot. Angel Apparition also went down. Didn't even get off his ultimate. Laser burning down the entire Radiant side. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, the Bruce is doing a decent amount, but he needs to get out of there. And actually, now Simba's next in line gets taken down by the slot. That's gonna do it. That's probably gonna do it. I, I, sniper's dead, man. They actually got three heroes dead. None of which can buy back. What's the buyback status on these guys? Wait, what's the buyback status? There we go. Yeah, they don't have any buybacks anymore. Only one that can buy back is the Rive King. And he goes down. That's gonna be the GG coming out. That was a well-played game, but I think in the end, Kuroki just didn't carry. He just didn't do what he needed to do. And Secret lost as a result to it. Dude! Gotta get a BKB against that many long-range heroes? Sorry. Gotta get that BKB. Just doesn't work otherwise. Just doesn't work. But nonetheless, I think this was an interesting game, and well done. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any games from the XMG Captain's Draft that you want to see, let me know. Um, just leave the match ID down below. Other than that, hope to see you guys tomorrow. Leave a rating. Goodbye, everybody.